Longline fishing accounts for a significant percentage of island countries' tuna catch. This makes longlining important for the economies of many island countries. Tuna longline fishing targets the larger species of tuna, that is yellowfin, big eye and albacore tuna that live deep in the open ocean. Longline fishing also captures a variety of other non-target pelagic and ocean fish species. Tuna longlining is a passive fishing technique that involves the use of long main lines and branch lines with baited hooks. Fiji and its Pacific Island neighbors have been harvesting tuna for decades and over the years a number of tuna fisheries have developed. We have 13 longliners and they are all Fiji flat. We have got approximately 400 people, uh, some self-employed as well. Uh, we export our fresh fish to USA, Japan, Australia, New Zealand and the frozen to Bangkok. The Solander Pacific Limited Fishing Company operates out of Suva, Fiji, from where it exports fresh tuna and other fish to overseas markets. This documentary explains the longline fishing operation and the role of fisheries observers on board. And nowadays we used to be out for 20 days, but on this vessel we are doing two weeks trip. Yeah, in that uh, 12 days we do 12 shot, 12 set. Our target is tuna, mostly. Yeah, we're looking for big eye and yellowfin, but now we're catching albacore, mostly albacore. Oh, my job in the boat is uh, uh, just uh, control the job. In, uh, when the time we're shooting and we're holding, that's our job to do every day. The longline vessel Solander 12 departs Suva Harbour on one of its typical fishing trips. The vessel must steam overnight to reach the best fishing ground, one that the captain knows very well. Solander 12 has a captain, a chief engineer, and local Fijian crew members. Captain Viliame Talanoa is in charge of the fishing operation during the entire trip. The crew relies on his expertise and experience to find and catch fish. If they catch a lot of tuna and other fish on their trip, means that everyone will get a good reward in terms of wages. Uh, currently we have uh, about 20 observers, uh, qualified observers within our program. Uh, however, uh, seven of those uh, observers uh, uh, our national uh, uh, observer, uh, basically involved in our licensed uh, vessels. So the rest of the observers uh, are used by the regional observer program. Currently, only our national observers are uh, full-time observers in our program, and the rest are just uh, uh, contract for, for ROP. Uh, uh, for next year, we hoping to increase our our target. With the uh, we have the the other CMM, the Commission uh, 
uh, requirements for 5% online uh, coverage. So we're trying to maintain our observers so we can achieve our target uh, for next year. This is Mitieli Mbose Vakatumbo, a Fijian fisheries observer. On this trip, he has a lot of work to do. Mitieli will collect data on the fish catch and record this data on each individual sit. The fishing positions, the number of hooks between floats, the total number of hooks per sit, the number of landed fish, and whether they are retained on board or discarded. These are some of the basic data that the observer records during a typical observer trip to sea. The data and information he collects provide the only reliable means of determining the amount and type of bycatch and discard in the fishery. It is important that Michieli understands and adapts to the conditions, rules and culture of life on a longliner while he is on board Solanda 12. Day one of fishing, the first set for this trip, early morning. Setting the long line gear involves putting the main line, branch lines and baited hooks into the water. Several hours before this, frozen bait was put out to fall. Branch lines with baited hooks are attached to the long main line. And supported by a series of floats on float lines at regular intervals. Floats with float lines, branch lines with baited hooks, radio beacons and the main line make up the bulk of the long line gear. The main line is laid out using a machine called a line shooter or line setter. The end of the main line is marked with a radio buoy for locating the gear later during the retrieving process. The first radio buoy that is dropped into the sea marks the start of the set. The branch lines are attached to the main line at regular intervals. Using a timer or audio beeper, each hook is baited before being deployed. The float lines with floats are attached to the main line at regular intervals to support and keep the entire long line gear afloat. The number of hooks put into each basket or between floats has already been decided by the captain. This is based on his knowledge and experience of the most likely depth in the water where tuna may be. Hooks that are close to the float lines catch fish at a shallow depth, while hooks at the center of the curve catch fish at greater depths. The depth where the hooks are set in the water column is based on several parameters, such as how many hooks there are between floats, the length of the float line, the length of the branch lines, 
and the line sitting speed. The main line sitting speed, the vessel sitting speed and other set specifications are also decided beforehand by the captain. These specifications are routinely recorded by the observer, like Mitieli, for each sit. A basket contains all the gear between two floats, including branch lines with bait, main line and float line with float. It takes about an average of five hours to put out and deploy just over 3,000 hooks. At the end of sitting, the long line gear is left to drift for a period of time before the crew start to haul it in. This will allow plenty of time for fish to take the bait. The captain decides when to start hauling in. The hauling operation requires all crew to be on deck. It is a long operation and probably the hardest part of longline fishing. It usually starts around late in the afternoon and continues throughout the night till early the next morning. Main lines are hauled back using a line hauler. The first radio beacon brought on board marks the start of the hauling process. A crewman is in control of the hauling machine. He can either slow down or stop the hauling machine once a large fish is hauled on board. He can also tell ahead of time if a fish is caught on the line by the heavy weight of the main line that goes through the hauler. Branch lines, floats and float lines are dismantled and unclipped from the main line coiled and stored ready for the next sit. The hooks are removed once the fish are landed. The crew process the fish before they are stored and then preserve them in cold seawater. The hauling operation takes at least 8 to 10 hours depending on the number of hooks put out during setting and how many fish are caught. Sea and weather conditions also play a role in determining the duration of this operation. Target species such as yellowfin, big eye and albacore are carefully handled and processed for overseas markets. They are first spiked and bled before they are gilled, gutted and cleaned. Fish are preserved in cold refrigerated seawater. They will be kept there until the vessel returns to port and unloads. Bycatch may be thrown back into the sea if it is of low market value or is an unwanted species or is undersized or damaged or a protected species. The hauling continues until early the next morning. The Solander 12 makes 12 consecutive sets during this trip before returning to port to unload. It takes a whole night to travel back to Suva and unloading begins at once. Tuna preserved under ice or in refrigerated cold seawater can be stored for only a certain number of days before they must be unloaded and delivered to an overseas market. Two weeks is the maximum time for fish required for the sashimi market. Market demand and flight schedules for delivering the fish to overseas markets also have a bearing on the length of a fishing trip. The catch is unloaded 
and taken to a processing room for final grading, cleaning, processing and packaging. Fishing starts all over again the very next day. The crew and Solander 12 prepare to head back to sea. The next day finds them going through the same setting and hauling process all over again. Lines and hooks continue to be put out in the ocean to catch more tuna, more fish. At the end of the observer's trip on a long liner, a debriefer then interviews them. The observer's data is checked, verified and corrected by the PIRFO debriefer. How did you get your international? Following the debriefing, the observer continues to work on board, monitoring the longline fishing and making careful notes.